Hello and welcome to the fifth day of January 2022. I'm Kurt and this is the Good Life Meditation. The Good Life uh, Meditation is something that I do uh, every morning to remind myself of my uh, collected life objectives and my principles and to uh, see how I did applying these yesterday <clears throat> and to prepare for the coming day. So yesterday was a, a, a very good productive day of work. Um, usually my Friday ons, uh, I get every other Friday off at work. My Friday ons are a little mellower because half the organization is off. Uh, so usually much fewer meetings, more time to focus. And I didn't have any meetings yesterday. But man, did I focus. I really did lay out <clears throat> and start in the morning my um, tasks for the day and uh, knock those out didn't really have um, any opportunities for a challenge. Pretty much was headed to the, no, to the grindstone all day yesterday. Excuse me. I think I might sneeze. Darn allergies. Pardon me. Woo. Hi, Ollie. Excuse me. There's my little Ollie dog. So let's do this. Um, my seven objectives are to be always ready to die, to make good use of time, to uh, develop uh, and maintain good and sound life principles, to cultivate good emotional reactions, to perform good actions, to recognize my true limits, and uh, to do just one thing at a time and to do, to do that thing slowly. I'm going to do this quickly. And I think Ollie might want to go out. <clears throat> now my uh, principles are principle of war, to always uh, be challenging the things that I believe are true. Reason, and this are principles of honesty, objectivity, and doubt, where reason is the uh, way of approaching the world that helps me to engage in that war and to live a uh, more deliberative life. I like the way that sounds. <laughs> Just a second. Number of three is the homunculus, the little the idea of a little sorry the idea of a little mortal that lives inside my head as my substitute for a soul. After the homunculus comes the uh, anchor hold, the idea of a little uh, place where the hum homunculus resides, where uh, my life uh, it transpires from a rock sticking out of a sea, utterly yeah. removed from all others. It just reminds me that we're always alone, even when we're together with other people. Each of us is ultimately always alone. <clears throat> That's a useful reminder in a lot of different ways. It helps to keep me uh, um, attentive to uh, the need to reach out, to shout across the waters to others. It helps me to remember that uh, I, there's a degree of self-sufficiency is required to, uh, to, to live well. And uh, also that... Um, there is no coming back when the, when the seas eventually sweep me off the water, off that rock, or uh, the elements, or I jump. Heaven forbid. Some people do. Now the home of good and evil is next. <clears throat> My reminder that um, <clears throat> right and wrong do not uh, live out there among the stars. They're concepts in our head that we uh, develop over time. And we apply to the world. Next is uh, um, purpose. And the three sub-principles of biology, virtue, and mission, <clears throat> which are my purpose. <laughs> to be a good husband and father. To raise my child to adulthood. To be there to help out uh, until I get the hell out of the way. And then to uh, live a virtuous life where I'm <clears throat> attempting to improve the well-being, the happiness, if you like, of others. And then to uh, pursue my own mission, which my mission is uh, promotion of my objectives and principles, my good life creed, which is outlined here in my book, Going Alone, which you can get on Amazon. All, all of these objectives and principles are listed and explained here. Get it on Amazon. <clears throat> you can also get it from my website, goingalone.org. <clears throat> and if you, <clears throat> excuse me, darn, uh, desert air. 
If you have an interest in talking to others about these topics, when you go to my website, goingalone.org, uh, there's a link that you can that'll take you to the Discord. You know what? I'll put it. I'll put it at the link in the um, video description as well. So down there, I, I think I can do that. I think. <laughs> I think I can put the. I think I can put the, the HTM. I mean the URL in there at least. I'll type it out. Anyway, when you come to Discord, um, if you join us, there's a nice group of people there, and we talk about <clears throat> this stuff among other things. <clears throat> okay. Next is. Um, Atomic principle. Everything is made of little bitty pieces. Learning a lot about this from Lucretius here and on the nature of the universe <clears throat> in the first century BC, talking about all kinds of things, including <clears throat> atoms and the, the void of the void, <laughs> the void. Amazing insight from uh, two thousand years ago. <clears throat> now um, comes. Principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature, including you and me. And if I can remember, if I can recognize what the nature of things are, for example, um, I have a particular co-worker I'll be, worker I'll be working with. And uh, two or three years ago, when I was working in the same organization, I probably would have operated my, I probably would have operated with this person with an idea in mind of how I expected, and I still will. But I, I have, so I have the the, mo the model that I want to go, that I'd like to see them perform the way that I'd like to see them perform, and I'm in the lead position. So this is uh, someone I've never worked with before, but I know I know them. So a, a little a little bit enough to enough to know some of their character. So as we will be working together, I have the, the expectation of what I expect the role to be, and then. There's the, excuse me, the way that they actually are, in so far as I've been able to ascertain so far. So, I will abide. I will recognize that nature of what I've seen so far. It doesn't mean I'm going to superimpose it upon them. I'll be flexible, and open to having my preconceptions dashed and <laughs> revised. But uh, still, I will, I will hope for and encourage towards the uh, a particular type of professionalism, yet understanding that what their nature really is. And it's, it's an interesting balance. Three years ago, I wouldn't have done that. I would have just gone for the other and I'm grave, gravely disappointed <laughs> if it wasn't achieved. Well, I'll still hold to the standard. You know, this is sounding a whole lot like Plato's ideal forms, huh? Yeah, somewhere out there in the universe, there's an ideal form of a chair that all, that form that all, all chairs of... All chairs strive to emulate the perfect chair. <laughs> anyway, I'm wait I said I was going to go fast. I'm getting off topic. The principle of nature. The next is uh, the pirate ride. I hypothesis that we don't have free will. Hold by hold with faith. Yeah. Then comes um, um, maturity, which is the sub with the sub principles of wisdom and fortitude. Where we are mature when we are wise and strong. Then comes the um, social principle. We are we we creatures need we, we humans need each other. Then the principle of public speaking, to be very careful and deliberate with my words, and to never gossip. Then uh, uh, temperance. And the sub principles of suffering, simplicity, and apathy. And then uh, the the horror show. Life is a. Uh, an experience chock full of terror, terrible things, terror, literally. And uh, I want to remember that and work towards alleviate, alleviating some of the horror. And comes uh, that which must be born, which is the, the stuff that we have to carry in life, the challenges. Then comes the Feast of Ophel, is that right? That which must be born, Feast of Ophel, yeah. The, the waste and byproduct of our intemperate living when we rail at the world and, uh, gosh damn you, and we tell everybody about it and gets them upset and they go on and tell everybody in their world about it. And he said, she said, and as it goes on and on, you just pass it along. So this principle helps me to remember, one, not to do that publicly or with my family, hold it in to be more stoic, to deal with my inner turmoil in other ways rather than uh, shouting at the world. 
And uh, when, I, when others are doing it around me, to <clears throat> give them their space, offer some comfort, but do not consume it myself and uh, take it inside to uh, foment and seethe inside me. All right, um, the next is... Uh, Distraction. We distract ourselves through our work and play and all the activities that we do so that we don't have to see what the next principle, the great indifference, which is the deep emptiness of the universe that pervades not only pervades us, it's what deep within us, as Lucretius would say. There's, there's a void within us, but um, all the universe around us. And and that went, we think we don't want to see by that distraction is we don't want to see the, that, the great indifference, which is the void. Namely, a universe without any aspect of God. Which, in fact, leaves us all alone with one another. Not such a bad thing to be, but um, uh, denies any hope of immortality, at least. Or at least what that means. All right, next is... Um, Oh, the best seat in the house. To not want to be anyone else or be anywhere else or be doing anything else. I found a great one. Was it in here? Yeah, I found something I'm going to add to the, that principle yesterday. I was reading here. Lucretia says, remember the principle is the best seat in the house. The idea that, uh, that being satisfied and content wherever I am, whatever I'm doing. And uh, whatever, whoever I am, <laughs> whoever I am, he says. Nor this is a this is a long poem. Nor does it matter in what part of it you stand, wherever a man takes his place, it stretches away boundless, infinite. He's referring to the universe, so you could sub you could put that word in there. Nor does it matter in what part of the universe you stand, wherever a man takes his place, it stretches always boundless, infinite. I really like that. <clears throat> the best seat is everywhere, because the universe stretches boundless infinite. Now, I don't know if he was writing his cosmology, but we will forgive Lucretius um, for making such a, a, a claim uh, more than two, two millennia before cosmology really <laughs> even began to get a grasp of what the universe might be like. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm slurping. Um, Okay, that was, oh, the best seat in the house. Next is um, the path of wildness. It's a way to go forward, to get unstuck, to move into new life by assessing, uh, collecting facts, assessing and deciding, and then moving on. Next comes, um, <clears throat> the risk of avoiding risk. The deep level risk of finding ourselves and the surface level risk of uh, uh, the safe and sane, the sober sound life, the American way, <laughs> home and family and uh, education and uh, good sound, sound job, saving for retirement, etc. And then the deep risk of finding ourselves. It's hard to do both. It's hard to get the deep stuff and the surface stuff in one lifetime. Usually we uh, lean, gravitate towards one or the other. And it's um, the, the caution is that if you're someone who feels that deep longing for uh, some self-actualization, that <clears throat> if we don't do that, uh, that'll come back to haunt us later if we live long enough to be haunted. <laughs> well, that's another good one. If we live long enough to be haunted. I like that one. I'm, I'm writing down <clears throat> potential uh, <laughs> subtitles for this video. A more deliberate life. That was first one. If we live long enough to be, I like that one better. <laughs> okay, what was, well, where was I? Oh yeah, the risk of avoiding risk. Next comes the uh, sin and damnation. There, there are seven sins in my worldview, and the consequence of indulging in these sins is damnation in the here and now. These sins are um, uh, uh, falsity, being untrue. Credulity, believing things too too quickly, uh, hope, which is 
oh, I want something, but you don't do anything about it. <laughs> if you couple it with action, then you're in better shape. Faith, which is believing something and telling ourselves that the fact that we believe is evidence for the belief. <laughs> Super, uh, superstition, which is a category of belief that needs no further justification that it's ridiculous. Um, authority, which is believing something because someone in a, in, in, with, with a fancy office, a fancy hat, or uh, a fancy title tells us it's true. Uh, and dogma, believing some, oh, believing something that um, uh, is is part of our part of the blessed tradition, you know, or or uh, is 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 codified in a giant book. <laughs> and then the last one is gossip. Gossip. Gossip's the only one that's not a category of belief. And and, and the consequence of these things of engaging in these things is damnation in the here and now, especially that damn, especially that damn faith. Which is really the only one of the of the of the seven the seven that are related to belief that has somehow um, gained the reputation of of being a virtue. It's like a wolf in sheep's clothes amongst the rest. It's like yes, no, it's a greater thing. Faith is a wonderful thing. It's not. It's actually a it's actually a deadly sin. Hmm. Next is uh, sin, uh, sin and damnation, complete oblivion. When we die, there appears to be no afterlife no, because we don't have a soul, and it seems that there is no God. So uh, we won't see the ones we love after we're dead. We won't have a chance to reconcile our differences, and there will be uh, um, no chance for justice to be meted out because <clears throat> there's nowhere and no when and no who <laughs> to do the metting. <laughs> uh, Next is, uh, after complete oblivion, is the great life adventure. One or more experiences in life that form the uh, nucleus of our, uh, of who we are, become part of our character. I recommend the decade of the 20s to give yourself the great life adventure. Maybe one or more. Next is the season of philosophy. This is a time to record what we've learned along the way. Do it, do it when the voice speaks, because the voice will pass. Um... Next is the uh, the muse who moves on. She blows away. <laughs> uh, season of philosophy. Next comes the bullseye aim. Oh, we shoot for the mark, but usually miss. Bleh. So be it. Hey, I got it. Lucky me. Um, uphill climb. Just life is just if the the progressing forward life is one of marching upward and onward towards uh, new heights, new vistas. Uh, and then it's cold up there, chilly and windy, dangerous. Oh my. Uh, arena and utility is next. Life is this um, arena where we get to have all these adventures and experiences and use our uh, principles like tools along the way, a little apathy here, a little temperance here. Next is the uh, bull, uh, no, not the bullseye, and the... Um, uh, <sighs> Nothing is enough. Nothing is enough. <laughs> Less is sometimes much better. After nothing is enough is... What's that? What's next? It's the last one. The principle of fun. A reminder to simply have a good time to enjoy life. And that's it. I did my good life creed. <clears throat> next, um, talk about the day. <clears throat> it's a Saturday. My chores are already done because I did them on Thursday. Um, my daughter's uh, boyfriend, Chris, is here staying with us. So uh, we're going to have a nice weekend together. Um, maybe we'll go out and have some breakfast. And uh, I think Chris has some stuff he has to do in the morning. And then we'll uh, do some stuff in the afternoon. Hey, maybe we'll go to Julian for pie or something. We'll see. Anyway, I wish you all the best. Be safe, but not too safe. Take care.